We're going to do an in-depth look at the cues as they are the definitely leading the market upwards and in a very strong uptrend as indicated by the directional movement index when it crossed above 20 on May 16th. So ADX at 20.45 and was definitely pointed up before that. It looks like the transition was right before there around the 9th of May. And the one thing I noticed that differentiates the cues from the SPX is that REI tries to seek neutral zero and finds it sometimes as you can see here's one one over here in February 7th and that's about it maybe back here in December 27th so it doesn't stay at zero too long before it gives the indication one way or the other in this case it went up and in this case it went down but not very far and in this case it went down but not very far so when it comes off of zero to the downside we're looking to get below this oversold 40 for less than five days and then get back above it and hopefully all that happens when the demarker one is sailing above its overbought zone here it's in a region so it's really going high there same thing with rack so if these two are well above they're over bought lines and seeks zero comes off of it goes under over sold goes back above it within five days and that's a big time buy signal dm1 came from overbought down below oversold for one day and then kind of stayed right above it so that's okay too as long as it stays within oversold and overbought but that's definitely not my buy signal and I would have exercised extreme caution in this area up here. But the REI did come back around and get back above the oversold within five days before printing a region. Just like Rock did over here in the overbought zone. So it takes 15 periods for that to print there. It's just started. So 15 periods above the overbought line and this one's 13 periods. So the DM1 was above its overbought line for 13 periods and has been just sailing away. So REI is trying to seek neutral zero again like back here. So let's see what happens when it gets to zero where the DM1 is and rack. And here's the S&P 500. You can see REI has sought and found neutral for several days. I'm sure that has something to do with the S&P 500 having five times as many instruments inside of it than the Qs. And definitely well diversified. And the Qs is very similar to the S&P 500 in that it has been poking its nose above the Bollinger Band, the Upper Stark Band, and Channel 3 High these past couple of days. It closed below all three of them on Friday. And the Qs has printed an ongoing demand line, which for the open on Tuesday the 20th will be at 364.52, give or take 20 cents or so. So price would need to open below that level and then close underneath that level to qualify the ongoing demand line. If it opens above that level and then subsequently closes below it this ongoing demand line will be disqualified and could be a fading opportunity in the other direction up and the mid band of the stark bands at 36309 will more than likely start the day below the ongoing demand line so that could be good support for a bounce off of it and then get back above it. We'll have to see what happens there. And the Shande indicator, which has the extremes at 75, so it has a ways to go to hit that, but it's somewhat elevated. 
It was up near 70 a few days ago at 67.97, but has been staying away from 75 for the most part. And the ATM trigger, powered by AI, is up in the nosebleed section here. Both the pressure down, the slow trigger up, and the fast trigger up and the ATM chart lines is still indicating that it's going to stay up there as it says down long term over part down so this is a counter indicator meaning think the opposite even though it's way up here it's called pressure down so when this says down that actually means it's up and going to stay there Unlike over here, this would have been the opportunity long term overbought P alert up, which means even though that this was up, it could be a down move for the pressure, but there wasn't. And there was a little bit of a downdraft, but not much, and then back off to the races. And you can see everybody pouring into the queues. Look at the volumes down here 80 million. 71 million every day there's tens of millions of queues being bought up okay now for the most important one please see the previous video for explanations on these risk levels i have every sequential and combo that demark offers switched on but i'm not displaying the 13s just the risk levels so on the 15th there was an up close and then on Friday there was a down close. So for Tuesday the 20th if there's an up close above these risk levels they'll be qualified and then we'll go after the confirmation bar after that but one step at a time let's get it qualified. And that's what happened back here with all these qualified risk levels qualified and confirmed that is and the megaphone cell 7 and count 7 keeps moving along nicely there was a couple of lack periods here but it continued on and it printed up here and kept traveling all the way through up here and no danger in starting another count to the downside yet so we need to wait for a five or a six to start before we can even think of a seven and the KSTs are sailing away too everything is positive short term intermediate term long term looks like the intermediate term has planed out for a couple of days but We'll have to see what happens there. The short and the long are looking really good. Short just crossed back above its signal line here. And the intermediate term and long term have been crossed over their signal line for quite a while. Intermediate term way back here. And things were a little wonky back here when this ATM pullback alert up was printed. We had some upside and it was a little bit frightening if anybody was buying back then it came down below it nailed the lower stark band a couple of times and that was an indication as a buy signal and then off to the races and the queues have been completely ignoring these ATM exhaustion alert downs. This one, well, maybe a little bit for a downside, but this one just kind of went sideways, which is legitimate too. Completely ignored this one and went tearing to the upside. Same thing with this anti-differential down. A lot of rules involved with that one, but it completely ignored that and kept going. And that brings us to today, where the psychological line went into the overbought area and has crossed down below it. And with this one, anything above neutral 50 is people buying, and anything below neutral 50 is people selling. 
So for the most part there's been a lot of accumulation right underneath the line here and the Williams percent R has had some extended periods above its overbought line there some slight dips and then the buyers come in back above overbought slight dip back into buying again and now maybe another dip we'll have to see what happens here that's quite an extended time above that Williams percent R overbought line even though there are a couple of dips and I've been using the zigzag indicator I'm finding that quite useful and right now it's in a big zig mode for sure and I'll let you know when it goes into zag mode and the MACD is looking good above its signal line the QQE is definitely in overbought territory and above for a while like everything else and RSI is starting to turn down a little on this bar from Friday. Had a little bit of a downturn. Ultimate oscillator is still pointed up near its overbought line there. So that's still looking pretty good. And it looks like when this one, ultimate oscillator, goes above its overbought line, it can be pretty serious. So that's something to watch out for. So it went above here and then it was a pretty good downdraft. And the commodity channel index is in the nosebleed section too. It's been overbought for quite a while. It's pointed down. It needs to simmer down. All of this needs to simmer down for a little while before it can head back up. Or it could just go sideways. That would be good too. Something similar to this area here. Accumulation during a consolidation period and we'll end it here with the cues on a daily cloud chart you can see it has officially gone parabolic they fit real nicely look at that all of these bottom wicks on the candles here so nothing good ever happens when instruments go parabolic it usually always ends up getting ugly but hey, with this AI thing, it could just buck that trend and head down a little and just keep going.